Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be continuing with our beginner level character course on how to create this little monster game character. In this seventh installment, we're going to be weight painting and defining shape keys so that we can optimize our character for animation. Without doing this step, you may find that your character has odd distortions when moving. Weight painting and shape keys help to eliminate these odd distortions when your character moves or is posed which is pretty important to ensuring that your animations look natural and fluid when rendered or in a game. As I mentioned before, this course is a nine part series on a game character workflow. We will be picking up for the end of part six. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, to start off, let's select our character's body and then switch to weight paint mode. You will see when we do so, a heat map of sorts shows up on our character. This represents the weight or influence each bone of the armature has over a given part of the character. If we click over on the vertex properties tab on the right, you can see under vertex groups, all the bones we named in part six. If I click on the hips, you can see some green show up on the body, which tells us that the hip bone has some weight or influence over this part of the body. As I click on the spine and then the head, you see the weight or influence of those bones as well. This is what Blender did when we selected parent with automatic weights at the end of part six. It's a pretty good start, but as you'll see in a moment, it needs some manual adjustment. The hotter or more red the color, the greater the influence a bone has over that part of the mesh. The cooler or more blue the color, the less influence it has. So when I go into pose mode and select the hand controller, for example, and move it around, you can see not just the hand moves, but the horn too. I don't want that. I want just the hand to move. So let's select the horn then switch back into weight paint mode, forward slash for local view. Over on the right, I'm gonna select the different bones to see what weight they have over the horn. We can see the head has pretty strong weight as it's green, but we can also see I.L and thumb.L have some influence as well. This is what is causing it to move when we move the hand. I want just the head bone to influence the horn, not the eye or the thumb. So I'm gonna select the head bone again on the right and then set the paintbrush to draw and the weight and strength to one. I'm also gonna turn on auto normalize over on the right, which makes sure that the total weight of all bones over any part of the mesh does not exceed one. This means that if I paint with the weight strength set to one, any other bone that may have influence over this part of the mesh will be erased at the same time. Now you can see when I select the I.L bone, where it was once green just a moment ago, it's now completely blue, meaning the influence has been erased. As I go through the other bones, you can see the thumb bone as well no longer has influence. This is again because of auto normalize. Just as an aside, another way you can assign weight is by tabbing into edit mode, A to select all, and then select the bone you want to influence it. And with the weight slider set to one, click the assign button. Keep in mind this doesn't work with auto normalize as you'll see in just a moment. So with it all painted, let's go back to pose mode and test it out. Selecting the hand controller and moving it around, you can see the horn doesn't move anymore. And when I select the head controller, the horn follows the head 100%. So now let's move to the eyes and eyebrows now. When I select the eye bones, we can see the eyebrows get distorted and move around a bit too, which I don't want. I want the eye bones to only control the eyes. The eyebrows will move with the head bone. So let's select the eyebrows, back into weight paint mode, and you can see the eye bone has 100% influence over the eyebrow. I want the head bone to influence it though. So selecting the head bone, paintbrush set to one with auto normalize on. Let's partially paint a bit like this. To show the other method, edit mode and clicking assign. sign. 
When I select the head bone, you can see now it has 100% over the entire brow, not just the part we partially painted. However, when I select the eye bone, we can see auto normalize only worked with the part we painted and not the part we assigned in edit mode. To fix this, you can also set the paintbrush to subtract and remove weighting like this. Scrolling through the other bones to make sure there are no flashes of color and it looks like we're good. So let's test it out again, back into pose mode, select the eye bones and they are no longer being influenced. We can see though that the eye is also influencing the body as well, which kind of looks odd. So let's do some more cleanup on the eyes, selecting the body and then switching to weight paint mode. We can see that when I select I.L, it has influence over a large part of the body. Again, I want I.L to just control the left eye of the character, so with the paintbrush set to subtract. I'm going to remove all of this weighting. I'll go through all of the other bones on the right and do the same so that the eye bones have no influence over any part of the body. Now back in pose mode, when I move the eyes, the body isn't moving anymore, which is great. The teeth are moving a bit though, so repeating the same process as before, selecting the eye bones and subtracting any influence they have, then selecting the head and brushing in full influence with strength set to 1. Okay, so the body could use a little bit of cleanup too. Looks like there are some hard edges in the weighting that I want to soften. So let's select the body into weight paint mode. I'm going to start with the head, change the brush to draw, turn down weight and strength to make my paintbrush a little bit softer as well as changing the fall off like this to make it have a very soft edge. And now just making the weighting here a little bit more gradual and softer. I want the head bone to have weight over the top half or so of the body. So that looks a little bit better. Now onto the jawbone. Same thing, just making it a little bit softer, extending it out around the bottom of the mouth a little bit more. And then up and around the top. I usually paint a little bit, then switch back to pose mode and test out how it looks. Here I find that I want the teeth to be partially influenced by the jaw. So I paint in some soft green influence so they move a bit when the jaw moves. Then on to the arms. Here I find that the arm moves a bit too much of the body and head. So I adjust it a bit by using the subtract and draw brushes. And same with the leg, just adjusting the influence so it doesn't go too high up into the body, as well as making it a bit more gradual by having the fall off set to custom as we did before. Okay, so with the weight paints more or less set, let's move on to setting the shape keys. Shape keys help in fine tuning the shape of your character in any given position you set. You can see as I move the leg back and forth as if he were walking, the body and tail still have a weird odd distortion which will really be pronounced when we do the walking animation. To start, I'm just going to make sure we have a perfect symmetrical model by selecting one half of the model, deleting it, and then adding and applying a mirror modifier. You could also just select all the vertices and then press F3 and type symmetrize as well for a quicker method. Okay, so now I'm going to move his leg back as if he were walking or running.
Over on the modifier tab, make sure to have the edit and cage options selected for the armature modifier. This will make it so that we can sculpt while the character stays in this position. Then to the vertex tab, under the shape keys area, click on the plus button twice. You should have one shape key called basic and we can just leave that one as is. Rename the second shape key to something like leg swing L for left, then set the value to 1.0. Now control tab into sculpt mode and sculpt the shape of the leg and body you want when the character is in this position. Okay, so that looks a little bit better, a little bit smoother. Now let's add a driver. A driver will gradually implement your shape key as your character's bones and armature move towards the position you just set. So for object, let's select our armature. Bone, let's select thigh.l here as it is the main bone that moves the leg. For the type of driver, I'm gonna go with the X rotation of this bone. Mode Quaternion. And space set to local space. Now up here in the equation tab, type this to start. The 0.8 will very likely need to be changed depending on your model. The goal is to change the 0.8 number to whatever is needed to make the driver value here go as close to 1.0 as you can get it. Okay, with that pretty much at 1.0, let's select our leg swing L shape key. Click the little down arrow here and select new shape from mix. Let's rename this new shape key leg swing R for right. Then click the little down arrow again and select mirror shape key. You should see this little message in the bottom right corner. If you get an error, you need to make sure your model is mirrored as I went over a little bit earlier. Now in pose mode, select the left foot bone first, right click and select copy pose. Then select the right bone, right click and select paste flipped pose. Now over on the right, select the equation we set for the leg swing L shape key and copy it. Select the leg swing R shape key. Then down in the value section, right click, select add driver, and do the same as we did before. Object armature, bone thigh.r this time. Type X rotation. Mode quaternion space, local space, and then paste the equation in the equation box and remove the negative sign. And it should now show a driver value of positive one. And then click update driver down here. Okay, so now it's just a matter of repeating the process for the forward swing of the leg. Same thing as before. Position the bone into place as if the character were walking or running in pose mode. Now under shape keys, click on the plus sign to add a new one. I'm gonna name this leg swing L front. Now with the new shape key selected, set the value to one and sculpt it into the shape you want. When you have the shape you want, right click the value field and select add driver. Same settings as before. Object armature, bone thigh.l this time again. Type X rotation, mode quaternion, space local space. Paste the equation from before in the equation box and change the number so that the driver value goes to positive one. To copy it over to the other leg, select leg swing L front, then click on the little down arrow and then select new shape from mix, rename it leg swing R front, click the little arrow and then select mirror shape key. Now in pose mode over in the viewport, select the left foot bone, right click and select copy pose, then select the right foot bone, right click and select paste flipped pose. With the right leg in place now, select the leg swing R front shape key, right click and enter the same parameters as before.
Okay, so with the legs done, I'm just gonna repeat the same exact process for the arms. To make it a little bit easier, I'm not gonna do a front and a back swing. I'm just gonna lift them up. I also found that using Y rotation instead of X rotation in the driver type parameter field was a little bit better for my needs. But other than that, it's pretty much the exact same process for the arms as it was for the legs. So that's it for this one. Hopefully you have a model that moves a little bit better than before. So let's get out the to-do list and call part seven done. In the next video in part eight, we're gonna animate a simple idle and run animation. A few shout outs this week. Shout out to Asa Fevenancio on Instagram with an amazing render on the bear. Love the flower. Melon tree with some great composition and staging. Really got me reflecting on things. Julie Matt art with a clean and stylized bust. Great texture on the hair and beard. Valeria Draws, who's getting acquainted with Blender very nicely, sculpting in her unique style. And Blender.Weekly with some splashes of vibrant color with the bear tutorial. Thanks for the shout outs, guys. If you'd like to be featured here, just tag me somewhere and I'll put you in my next video. Feel free to ask questions below. I try and answer all of them and sometimes I actually help. If you want to share your art or ask a question, I have a little group on Facebook going. Link is below. Or you can just hit me up on social media somewhere. I love seeing your guys' stuff. I have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Twitch, Gumroad, and Udemy as well. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.